So this is my thermal inflator set up. Uh, I would like to keep a, a board underneath just to keep uh, any sort of heat from getting to the grass. I'm using a camp stove, I, a double burner just in case for future projects if I ever wanted to do uh, two flames at once to increase my the thermal output. Uh, also I've got my stack here which I just got at, at the hardware store. It's just a piece of uh, air ducting that I've cut in the slot into that I can light the a fire in and that allows it to get oxygen. So this setup just uses a small camping propane tank. Uh, it works pretty well. You, I, some of the checks I do beforehand, I double check to make sure all the knobs are on the off position and all the fittings are tight. I also keep a, a small fire extinguisher on hand as well. Yeah. So here's a test light just to give you an idea of what I do. Kind of feel the heat. So it's a pretty good setup. I like it. I uh, for my thermal projects, it's been a really good one. Um, and then I'm going to do some improvements in the future. So the history of thermal inflators actually goes back to Joseph Montgolfier uh, with his original experiments with hot air uh, as a lifting gas. In uh, 1782, he discovered that if he took an open flame and put it into cloth or paper, he could make the thing lift. And so the, the thermal inflator uh, in the beginning was just an open fire, just open flame whether it was burning paper, straw, wool, uh, anything that produced a lot of smoke, that's kind of where the inflator starts, it's just open flame. And then they discovered that they could uh, have the fire go with the balloon, and of course this increased the times, its flight times. Uh, however, due to fire concerns, uh, sometimes there's a concern that these things will go into trees or they'll go down into dry grass, so, but some of the early models uh, of their experiments with flight, uh, in 1783 with their sheeps and birds experiment, they actually, is the first time I've read that they, uh, it's described that they, they built a funnel or chimney out of strong cloth. Uh, it was painted and was suspended over a fireplace. And then they used this uh, to funnel hot smoke into a into the, their hot air balloon experiment and again this is before the fire was going with the balloon but this idea that you have a heat source and you have this funnel that kind of funnels the heat into the balloon that's kind of what we're doing with today so an early model that someone made of a thermal inflator uh, is by roy beeching jr uh, and he calls it a hot air furnace where he basically just took different size cans and uh, cut flanges, that's these little triangle uh, strips that they would fold out, they'd flange it out, and they would just stack these cans from big to small, and that would be the funnel. And so then he had this heat source underneath it, and it would funnel the heat into his balloons. Later improvements to this model, instead of having ascending cans, we have uh, a model here uh, that was made by Don James where he took a five gallon metal bucket in its lid and flanged on a stove pipe uh, onto the top of it. And here, in here he would put 
uh, crumpled up newspaper and the the fire that they do the fire pot they'd have a fireman who would feed this this furnace uh, and make heat go into the balloon but one of the problems and even in his book model hot air blimps uh, he talks about how it, there's a chance that you're it could catch your envelope on fire so using open flame around paper uh, it's not ideal and you always have that risk and he even says hey if this thing catches fire just let it go it's going to burn up there's not a whole lot you can do but i was reading uh in ray morris's book how to make and fly model hot air balloons i saw this picture where he has a recommendation that you could fill a balloon using a, a camp stove and i like this because you don't have the ash from burning paper and so it seems like a lot safer uh, method of of inflating these paper balloons so my model uses kind of a combination of Don James's and this uh, the Ray Morris's picnic stove suggestions so that's where I got my idea so going on the internet I actually found someone built something similar to mine but uh, theirs looks a lot uh, their model screws onto the top of their bottle looks like they're using a larger bottle than mine um, but I like that they, their stove pipe top is actually secured to their, their stove. Uh, it might be better if their base was a little wider, keep it, but again, maybe it doesn't matter. I haven't used theirs, but then it's interesting if you go online, you find people who are doing similar things. So another interesting thing I found online is this, where someone has uh, the ducting within ducting. And I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, I think it's probably for safety concerns where maybe they're, if they touch the pipe, they're worried about being burned or if they're dealing around with kids, maybe the kids are touching the stove and so they just want to make sure. But I also wonder if it heat helps prevent heat loss. So that might be something interesting to play with for future designs. Another interesting thing I found is some people were using uh, a heat gun. And I found this online, someone sells a kit uh, where you can buy and it has this little funnel that goes up but it's essentially just a heat gun with an air, uh, air funnel. Using a heat gun would eliminate any risk with having uh, open flame at all so that would be interesting although it might cost a bit more in your electric bill. Um, along with using a heat gun uh, Clive Catterall in his book The Hot Air Balloon he mentions a lot of different kinds of ways. Like uh, he mentioned some people use toasters that are funneled up, uh, popcorn poppers, uh, a bunch of different electrical methods. And then finally I found this one where it shows someone who's, I, I'm assuming that this is probably heated, like thermal. I'm not sure what is going on in here, but it looks really interesting, his inflating device.